on one side and a 16th relief, inch relief on the other side. And so whatever the width is here, you basically want it to be one inch um, uh, narrower. Now, I'll, I'll tell you how you do it. If you're wondering how long to make this piece of wood, it's really simple. You get one style and you put another style there. And you want it 20 inches. Now do it this way, it's easier. And you want it to be, the, let's say 16 inches. You go to 16 right there, ah, 11 inches. That's how big the style has to be. Did you see how I did that? No. I love the idea. Such trickery. <laughs> let's say this is, I have two styles here, two long styles. So I have a style on one side of the cabinet, I have a style on the other side of the cabinet. And you're trying to figure out how big this piece should be right here. Well, essentially what you do, this is this side, this is this side. Let's say you want it to be 16 inches. 11 inches is right there. I don't know whether you can see that. Eleven inches minus an eighth, ten and seven eighths is what you want this one here to be. Yeah. And if, if anybody wants to see it afterwards, it's, it's a bad picture. So you put them together. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. It would be a wise idea to make it a little wider just so you can, you can have to try to You can. You can do that. This guy's just starting out. Yeah, 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 you can. I mean, the other thing is, you know, when you when you go to the store and lumber plant, you're, you're looking for straight. If it does one of these things that looks like a hockey stick, then, you know, bypass it, get something different. Um, is there pictures there of my cabinets I finished on the other side of the wall, Chris? Yeah, okay. See, those are the cabinets I've done there. And on the other side of the wall where the, where the dryer that is, this is the cabinets that I'm doing right now. <coughs> what kind of paint did you use? I used a water base stain. Yes, yeah, that's a that's a water base uh, gray stain, and I used a water base. I, I do is teeth uh, polyurethane. It's a water base. It really is a good product. One of the biggest problems you always have with water bases before they would really bring up the grain. Uh, some of the products you're making now are pretty good. You're not getting the grain raised the same way at least. So. Do you remember the brand name or teeth? Teeth, teeth, I think it's yes. Is it bubble? No. 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 It, and I very thing, see all those kindness there? I very them no. all and stain them all with a foam brush. Oh, because that tire. That's the worst part of it. Yes. Just one more question. Why would you use an abscess kind of Yes. No, part of the, the veneer you see on particle board. Because it's so straight and flat, yeah. they, they get away with a real thin yeah, veneer, like a really thin yeah. veneer, and that and that's why I can I take the plane and I, I can take it down good, and then I take a sander and I smooth it off. And uh, but yeah, th that's the other reason I don't like particle board. The veneer yeah. is really thin. Yeah. Yes. That's the stain in the yeah D deft. I think it's D E F T. Yeah. I get Benjamin Moore on Simco. They're not paying me for this, but that's where you got. Yeah. That center panel, is it floating in there? Which? Oh, you no, yes, it is. Yeah. 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 You don't want that tight again if you have expansion. Um, I use about a 16th shy on, on the top and the bottom. It, by the time you put Verithane and everything else in there, it's not going anywhere. It's not rattling. No, uh, no, I, I, I do the standing afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about the thin veneer on the part of the thing, yeah. why is that an issue? <laughs> it, 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 it leaves very little room for air when you're sanding or planing or doing anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the width of your styles, what's the width of your <laughs> I use one by three. I, you know, I, I made a cabinet, and I, unfortunately, I made it uh, with a one by two. Yeah. And then, of course, when I went to put the hinges on, it wasn't enough room. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I use one by three, whether it's pine or oak or whatever. Yes. That's how, that's how much solid wood will expand. It, it, it really does expand and you know, contract quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, um, I, I, have a, I have a forstner bit in my drill press and I drill it straight in. I know exactly where I'm going. I think I measured on this one here, the one I was passed around, I think I measured exactly four inches from the top down. Uh, and I go exactly five millimeters in, and I drill straight down and through. But is it like a, it's, it's a like hole. It's, it's, like a, it's, just a it's, it's a straight hole. It's a straight cup hole. hole. And, the, and the, it's too bad I don't have a, uh, I could take it up there, but I take it out. And the, the other thing I use, and you should always get, these are your self-centering drill bits. When I have my, my hinge, and I'm gonna drill a hole in, you have your self-centering. And so it, it, I don't know whether anybody has seen these, but basically the drill bit, I don't think you can see that. The drill bit is in the center and the collar on the outside is spring loaded. And so the collar hits the hole of the hinge. And so when the drill goes down, it goes right exactly into the center and it makes sure that your hinge goes in the, correctly the way it's supposed to be. Lee Valley, yeah, fifteen two forty. That's my member number. I know. There's different sizes for different drills. Yes, yeah. I have both four different self-centering drill bits. Yeah, I re really find them really beneficial for me at least. Yeah. Yeah, I bought some uh, of those self-centering bits. I use so much of this stuff. <laughs> My wife is a treat. I use so <laughs> much of this. It, it, it pays me to, to get good stuff. It, it, like this is this is a self of uh, the self centering drill bit you have, and so it's a tapered drill bit as opposed to just a straight drill bit. So when you put your screw in, if you're drilling into metal mine, especially especially if you're going to do like end drills like this, you have to have a, a pre-drilled hole because if not you're going to end up swelling, splitting the wood a little bit and making it swell. So it's well worth having these pre's. And these are the plugs that I use afterwards. For example, I drilled a hole here. And if at the end of the day I said to myself, you know what, I think I want to cover that up so nobody can see it. You put this in the drill press. You drill a piece of oak and it comes out with a little bit of a dowel, a bit of a tapered dowel. You put glue in here, you line up the grain, this is really important, you line up the grain with the plug, with the grain here, tap it in, let it dry, you get that flush cutting saw, you cut it off smooth with a sand, and it looks really good, it does. Yeah? CCS, yeah. the Yeah, you know what, that's... Probably a good idea. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lane, I was wondering, uh, when you asked around, you know, what you had the, uh, what you call it, the biscuit-like uh, piece of wood that went in there. That's to give you something to... Uh, That's what glues it together. Yeah. A lot of times when you do these doors, you have noisy bits. You have, uh, you have the male and the females. 
and the male and the female, they fit in together like this, really nice and tight, and so you don't need that little floating thing I have. Again, to buy a proper rail and style kit is a lot of money. So I, I used what I had, I used the slot cutter, did this way, and it works really good. I, I guess my question is, uh, a door, <coughs> with pocket holes, the, you know, Festool with their, their uh, the, the new piece of kit they have, does they don't have a biscuit, they have like a long slug that goes in there. Domino. They use, yeah, Domino, Domino. yeah. But I mean, they're, they're cost an arm and a leg. I mean, there's a lot of ways, and I gotta be honest with you, the biscuit joints I've used, in all the things I've used them, they haven't failed me, so. Even for heavy duty products? I, yeah, yeah. I mean this here? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just I do it so it's this way. This one here is yeah, where the where the part slides in, the panel slides in here. Right. I'm talking about the outside that little room that you want. Yeah. The chamfer I do, yeah, like that way? Yeah. 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 It, this it's a stop and you know the nice thing about the chamfer? It hides mistakes. If it's if it's tight like this, you can see little tiny cracks. Well, it's a chamfer you can't. So <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, and oh, the other thing too is I line it up so it's right in the center. But you could be out a bit. So whenever you're going to do this stuff, you put top, top, top. And so when you're going through the router, every piece that you put through, you're looking at the T going through because if not, it, it could be offset like this. And so you make sure they all go through the same way. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Any other questions? <laughs>